Hi, I'm Steve for Boat Test Reports. Thanks for being with us today. As always, we have a lively program for you today, and our features interview is with the Chief Commander of the United States Power Squadron. Be sure to see what she has to say. This week's episode of Boat Test Reports is sponsored by Regal Boats, which is introducing its new 36XO. The big news this week is that Scania, which manufactures engines for boats, trucks, and industrial applications, last week introduced two new emission certified diesels for the U.S. pleasure boat market. This is the first time that Scania has made clear its intention of entering the U.S. boat market. The company says its new 1150 horsepower, 16 liter V8 and 900 horsepower, 13 liter inline six diesels will have an industry leading power to weight ratio. The new engines are built on a compacted grafted iron block and have a wastegate turbocharger plus common rail extra high pressure fuel injection. The engines meet the Environmental Protection Agency tier three recreational standard for marine emissions. The 16 liter engine is offered in power ratings ranging from 1,000 horsepower to 1,150 horsepower, while the 13 liter models span from 700 to 900 horsepower. The engine's compact modular and lightweight construction could make the engine suitable for new and repower applications and are a welcome addition to the options now available. <laughs> The spring and summer of 2020 have seen encounters with right whales and other wildlife on the rise. According to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, one of 10 endangered right whale calves birthed off the east coast of the United States was found dead off of Monmouth Beach, New Jersey. According to the National Fishermen, a necropsy determined the young male suffered at least two vessel strikes, suffering wounds from propellers and skegs. Boats are supposed to maintain a distance of 100 feet away from all whales, including dolphins, and 500 feet for right whales. Social distancing from orcas was on the mind of this sea otter, which recently climbed aboard a fishing boat in the Pacific Northwest. Come on up, bud. Overall, the owner of the boat handled the situation well, and as far as we know, while the adult orca missed out on a snack, everyone lived happily ever after. Absolute Yachts has introduced a new 64-foot flying bridge yacht, the 64 Nevada. She has the signature wide, uninterrupted salon windows, and for the new model, the bow windows have been significantly enlarged as well. At the stern, the transom can be converted into an optional water level aft cabin with a glazed watertight access door in what Absolute calls the beach club. Up top, the flying bridge is large and inviting. When the salon is entered, the supersized windows provide stunning views of the outdoors and the entire area, including the galley, blend with the cockpit. Below decks, the master stateroom is in the bow with a king berth and a full beam head. The VIP and guest staterooms have luxury fittings and all the cabins have en suites. And last week, Manitou, one of the country's premium pontoon boat builders, just launched two new boats. Let's find out about them from Manitou's sales manager, Garrett Koshak. Hey guys, I'm Garrett Koshak, Global Product Manager for Manitou Pontoon Boats, and today I'm excited to give you an inside look at the 2021 Manitou Aurora LE. This pontoon features the high quality design and performance that Manitou is known for at a highly competitive entry level price point. It can also be equipped with our exclusive Manitou V-Tune technology, which features a larger center tune positioned lower than the outer tunes to deliver superior handling, a smoother ride, and more control. PC Technology has announced a new line of power inverter chargers. As smaller boats get more loaded up with things like air conditioners that need no generator, inverters are finding an even greater audience. The BIC series offers sine wave output and comes in two versions. One that provides 2,000 watts of continuous output and is paired with an 80 amp battery charger. Another produces 3,000 watts of power and is matched to a 100 amp charger. Retail pricing for the smaller starts at $749.99, while the larger unit starts at $999.99. The first step to good seamanship is knowing how to tie a few basic knots. A good knot to use when we want to keep a rope from pulling back through a hold is the figure eight. A figure eight knot is for when you want to bring a line through a hole but you don't want it to go back out like a grommet on your canvas. You bring the line up through and then in the end you go around the back and then around the back again 
and it makes an eight. Pull it tight, and now it won't go through the hole. In these unprecedented times, many people are choosing to take to the seas to get away from it all. A good choice for long distance cruising could very well be the Outer Reef 610 motor yacht. I've tested it myself, so let's take a look at her highlights. The app deck has a fixed bench and movable chairs around a pedestal mounted table. Entry to the salon is via a sliding door. Inside the area is well lit with spacious opposing lounges and a cocktail table. Teak steps with a holly inlay lead up to the raised galley. The L-shaped stone countertop has good space for meal preparation. Interior stairs lead up to the flying bridge where there are lounges on each side with a table to port. Just ahead is a wet bar. When it's time to turn in, the master is aft with a berth on the center line. The ensuite head has stone countertops, a combination toilet, bidet, and a tile floor in the walk-in shower. Moving forward, the VIP cabin has an island berth and the ensuite head has two entrances, so it can also be used by folks in the guest cabin. To get more details, check out our full features and performance videos on the 610 motor yacht on Boatest.com. For decades, recreational boaters have turned to the United States Power Squadrons for education, courtesy inspections, and other resources. Recently, the organization introduced America's Boating Club to connect with the newer generation of boaters. To learn more about the programs available to boaters, we are joined today by Mary Page, the Chief Commander of the United States Power Squadron. Uh, my first question is, why did you change the name of the United States Power Squadron to America's Boating Club? Well, actually, we didn't change the name. The mother ship, as I call it, the corporate name is and shall remain United States Power Squadrons. America's Boating Club is a brand. The United States Power Squadrons is a name that has little recognition in today's generations. They think we're the local electric company. Um, if we use USPS, it's the US Postal Service. Mm -hmm. There are certain things that we did not intend to have confusion, but we instituted confusion. So by taking advantage of something we already owned and becoming America's Boating Club, boom, people know exactly what we are. COVID-19 has really advanced a lot of people who are dragging their feet and wanting to become more uh, savvy with social media. It has forced the issue, which has then complemented our ability to not only provide courses face-to-face, -face, but now with COVID-19, we've obviously had to change our delivery system there. But we offer online courses, we offer virtual courses, and we offer on the water training, which can be done with proper social distancing and with limited group size. Have you uh, noticed a change in the mix between male and female members uh, con compared to what it has been historically? Our numbers are, are pretty similar, but what I have personally noticed is that more of the women are taking administrative and leadership roles. So we may be a bit fewer in overall numbers. Ladies are stepping up and helping out in a more visible role rather than the background. My husband and I, we were originally sailors when we transitioned into power boats. The young man who is a Coast Guard licensed captain, who is our instructor and came with the power boat that we had purchased, he emphasized right from the get-go that the woman is at the helm and the gentleman is handling the lines. Do you have to own a boat to be a member? You can be a boat owner wannabe. You can be a previous boat owner who has a ton of experience and just wants to like hang out at the dock you know, the virtual dock and, and share sea stories or help us with teaching. So you do not need to own a boat to be a member. Do you have any other aspects to the Power Squadron that we should know about? And I'm going to say over the last three years, we're hitting 500 to 750,000 donated man hours. Those hours go to programs like cooperative charting, where we help NOAA maintain the recreational boater charts by our own members on their own boats with no reimbursement for anything. Additionally, aids to navigation. They're constantly checking out and reporting um, damaged aids or missing aids. We also are helping with geodetic marker recovery. 
So how much does it cost to be a member? Our membership, our annual dues are about $120 a year. You have, as the new member, reciprocity with every single local squadron in the nation, which is about 340 of them. Plus you have access to all of the online courses, seminars, activities, you can participate. Mary, I really appreciate you talking to us today. This has been a great conversation. Thank you so much for taking the time to do it. You're welcome. Have a great rest of the day and a great weekend. Okay, you too. Bye now. Bye. Now let's take a commercial break for this week's sponsor, Rego Boats, which is introducing its new 36XO. Picture this. You're laying in the sun at your favorite spot in the world, enjoying lunch with your family, taking on the day's adventures full throttle, then dining and entertaining your most special guests. And when you wind down from the fun, there's still room to enjoy complete and utter silence. These moments can live together, memories made together, same trip, same day. Meet the newest Regals, the 36 Grand Coupe and 36 XO. Now let's take a look at a question from the captain's exam. You are overtaking a power driven vessel in a narrow channel and wish to leave her on your starboard side. You may a. Attempt to contact her on the radio telephone to arrange for the passage. B. Proceed to overtake her without sounding whistle signals. C. Sound five short blasts. Or D. All of the above. And the correct answer is A. You could sound whistle signals and then wait for a response, but another way to come to an agreement is via the radio. Just call the other boat, typically on channel 13, and work out the passing arrangements. It's actually preferred when professionals are dealing with recreational boaters because they typically just don't know the whistle signals and end up returning a horn blast with a gesture that's less than complimentary. So that's our show for this week. Thanks for joining us. If there's something you'd like to see, let us know. And as always, I'm Captain Steve. I'll see you on the water.